Hi, I'm Phil. I grow orchids in Whanganui, which is in coastal New Zealand. This is one of a series of videos that I'm doing on growing orchids in temperate climates, such as ours here. This particular one is on Mazdevalias, which are very well suited for my conditions. Mazdevalias come from cool, misty mountains in Central and South America. The showy red, orange and yellow flowers don't resemble other orchids, looking more like a kite. The reason for this is the petals are largely hidden, the sepals making the visible part. Mazdevalias are a relatively shade-loving orchid and can often be grown in the shadiest part of a general greenhouse or even under benches. However, flowering can be more profuse under stronger light for some species. The main other general requirement is for good air movement. In the absence of this, leaves will get spotted and the plant may decline. So most growers keep the plants in houses with overhead protection from the rain, but with shade cloth or trellis sides that allow plenty of air movement. The plants are cool growing. Generally, they don't need to be grown in a heated house such in climates such as ours here. Most authorities recommend keeping them above 10 degrees. However, I grow mine to about 4 degrees at times without any harm, and generally it seems they will cope with anything above freezing point. At the time, at these conditions, good aeration around the plants, and particularly around the roots, can become even more crucial. At the other end of the scale, it would be unwise to allow the plants to get above uh, 30 degrees, and in that situation, air movement and well-watered medium would be critical. When the plants get outside their temperature range, they are prone to suddenly losing their leaves, especially if the moisture in the pots isn't ideal. Having masses of leaves fall off this way, sometimes overnight, isn't necessarily fatal, but it is distressing to see. Mastervalias are a fine rooted orchid, and they don't have storage organs such as pseudobulbs and no real rest period. So the medium needs to be a fine one, which is allow good contact between the medium and the roots. However, it also needs to have good aeration and drainage as the roots won't tolerate with log, with log conditions. Also, the medium should be long lasting as Mazda values don't like being disturbed and the roots won't regrow if damaged. Those who grow Mazda values successfully in New Zealand usually use number two or number three bark, which is a fine bark, preferably sieved and washed to remove fine dust, which could clog up the media, and with as few wood splinters as possible. Fern fibre from Wiki Ponga, or Dixonia fibrosa, tree ferns is another medium that works well. And some growers use a mix of bark with a smaller portion of fern fibre than bark, since the latter is relatively expensive. Some sphagnum moss can also be added to the medium to help retain water. Mazda Valley plants grow quickly, and therefore they can be divided. However, it is usually unwise to create divisions of less than about six or seven shoots to retain vigour. The plant can be squeezed and lifted out of its pot. There is usually a fairly obvious division point where the mother plant can be gently teased into two. The old medium should be shaken off. The new pot should be enough to accommodate about two to three years of growth. The medium should be shaken and worked around the roots, rather than constricting them. Then, then it can be tapped and compressed to ensure the medium is firm around the roots. As you do the repotting, be sure that the crown of the plant remains at the same level in the medium as previously, that is, not buried or exposed. Some growers put the roots over an open weaved or mesh pot, upside down inside the main pot, since the roots tend to grow better in the well aerated portion of the growing medium. Irrigation water should be reasonably free from impurities because they demand a fair degree of water purity and certainly not in water that has been put through a softener. Watering needs to be fairly frequent as the plants won't tolerate drying out. Usually it is best to irrigate when there are signs that the surface is drying out. A general guideline would be to water about every second day in summer and once every two weeks or week in winter, particularly if they're grown in a shady spot. Misting the plants or over the roots uh, at other times can be helpful too. The plants like high humidity, over 70%, so damping of paths and other areas under the benches can be useful.
particularly in summer. Masdevellias don't have particular nutritional requirements. Any general orchid or plant food is suitable. However, they are not very hungry plants, so generally you can fertigate them at about half the rate you would use for other orchids, and that is fine. The occasional calcium supplement may help to prevent blackening of the leaf tips if there isn't sufficient lime in the water supply. I always water the plants thoroughly with water before fertigating to prevent the buildup of salts. Masdevallias have a long flowering period and the bright colours of their flowers can enliven the growing area through the darker seasons. They are suitable for novice growers but also have a wide variety of forms and colours that can provide scope for ongoing exploration. The most common species that are used and ancestors of modern hybrids are the vibrant orange to cerise varieties Viciana, Coccinia and Ignea. Hybrids of these key species are also frequently grown. These include Falcada, Fraseri, Heathii, Rubicon and Jim Harper. Mastervalia is the biggest source of breeding. Species that have been hybridized with it to produce highly successful offspring include Constrictor, Cordata, Decumana, Calicodon, Triangularis, and Baliana. However, there are many more beautiful and indeed bizarre growing directions. Your local orchid society will have members who grow Mastervalias and will be willing to share cultural advice for your area. So, good luck with growing Mastervalias and thank you for watching.